Example 156, it says an experiment was conducted to determine if there is a difference between drying times for four different brands of outdoor paints. A multiple comparison procedure was used to compare the different average drying times and, the, and produce the following intervals. So we have this set of intervals, confidence intervals, that are coming from the multiple comparison procedure. We didn't cover how to calculate those intervals because it's quite difficult to do and time consuming and, and kind of the derivation is outside the scope of this basic elementary stats class. However, um, we can look at computer output or look at provided intervals and then interpret them. So, and that's probably the more important skill anyways, because in the real world, people would use software to calculate these intervals anyhow, right? So it says rank the means from smallest to highest, which means are significantly different. So our goal in this problem is to look at the results of the computer output and then to say, okay, based on these results, you know, what is the ranking of the means? So let's look at the intervals one by one and use our classic interpretation that we always use for confidence intervals. So if you remember what that inter interpretation was, it meant that what? It was simply that if the interval is all positive, right? If it's all positive, then the first mean is bigger, right? First mean is larger. If it's all negative, the second mean, remember, is larger. And then finally, if it has zero, if it has zero in the interval, right? So if zero is in the interval, then no significant difference, right? No significant difference exists. Okay, so that's the three things we wanna remember, right? And that'll help us do all the interpretation that we need. So when I look at this first interval, I see that it's all positive. Well, if it's all positive, the first mean is larger. The first mean in our subtraction is mean for A. So it looks like from that first interval, I can say that A is greater than B. All right, so that's my first conclusion, right? And I come down to my second interval. I see again, it's all positive. If it's all positive, the first mean is larger. Well, the first mean in this subtraction is A again, because it's A compared to C, so A is greater than C. All right, in this third interval, we're comparing A and D, and it goes from negative to positive, which means that there's zero inside. So if the interval has a zero, there's no significant difference between the two. So that means when I write A and D down, there's gonna be a part that includes equality. However, I don't want to, um, you know, at this point, stop there. I don't wanna just say, oh, well, they're not significantly different, so call them equal. What I still wanna do is to look at them and say, well, you know, the sample means weren't the same. And I know they weren't the same because the interval is not perfect, sim perfectly symmetric around zero, right? So if this went from negative four to positive four, there would be equal distance on the positive side of the number line and equal distance on the negative side of the number line. But this interval goes from negative 15 to four. In other words, this interval is more negative than it is positive. So when it's more negative than it is positive, I'm gonna think of this kind of rule, right? So remember we said when it's negative, the second mean is larger. The fact that this interval is more negative than the positive side, so there's more negative numbers in it than there are positive numbers, we can kind of treat it like this case where the second mean is larger. So what I'm gonna say is that D is greater than A, but I'm gonna put an equal to sign in there. And that equal to sign is gonna let me know that it's not significantly larger. But because of the way the interval turned out, I can assume that the sample mean for D was bigger than it was for A but it wasn't significantly bigger, so I put the equal sign. Remember, it wasn't significantly bigger because it has the zero, right? All right, good. So we do want to still get the idea of which one is bigger, but not significantly bigger in this case. And the way we do that is to use this rule, basically. Because it's more negative, then we're going to treat it like it's almost all negative. And if it's almost all negative, then the second mean is larger, right? But not significantly larger because it has a zero. All right, very good. So that's probably the toughest one for most people. Let's move on to the next one. It's just like the one above. We're comparing B and C, and it goes from negative two to eight. So once again, there's a zero in the interval. Remember, if it has a zero, there's no significant difference, but we still wanna write down B and C and do what we did a minute ago. We're gonna look at the two means, and we'll say, well, let's look at the interval here. The interval is more positive than it is negative, right? Uh, one thing I want to caution here, do not make the mistake to assume that 8 is C's number and negative 2 is B's number. That's not correct. That's poor thinking. 8 is not C's number and negative 2 is not B's number. These numbers are supposed to represent the difference when we subtract these two means, right? In other words, somewhere in this interval we believe the difference when you subtracted these two means exists, right? 
So we think that you know the true population means when subtracted, they produce a difference that's somewhere inside this interval. So this eight is not C's numbers, and this negative two is not B's number. And these numbers are supposed to be the difference between these two things. So we can't look at it that way. We always have to rely back on this interpretation, right? So make sure you're careful here. A lot of people look at the eight and they go, oh, well, that means C is bigger. No, 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 that's not correct, right? What this is interval is showing is that, first of all, there's a zero in it, so it's not significantly different. So we're going to have some kind of an equal sign, but we'll only have half an equal sign because we're going to have some kind of um, inequality with it, like less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, right? What we're going to do is just say, hey, look, this interval is more positive than it is negative, right? Because from zero to eight has a lot more positive numbers than from zero to two has negative numbers. So since it's much more positive, I'm going to treat it like it's an all positive scenario. And I'm going to say the first mean is larger. Well, what's the first mean in the subtraction? It's B. So this concludes that B is greater than or equal to C. So don't underestimate this one here because a lot of people miss it because they make that common mistake of looking at the eight and thinking that's C's number. It's not C's number, right? This interval is showing that B is actually a little larger than C. It's just not significantly larger. Okay, good. So we got the statement for B and C. Now we move on. Look at the next interval. It's a little easier. They're both negative. If they're both negative, all negative means the second mean is larger. That means D is greater than B. So D is greater than B. And then lastly, we have C and D compared. And if you write down C and D, and see that the interval is completely negative. If it's all negative, the second mean is larger. That means, again, that D is bigger than C, right? Because D was the second mean in our subtraction. OK, good. So now that we have all the intervals explained, now we can start to create our drawing. Our drawing says we should rank them from small to high, right? From small to large. So what I'm going to do is try to take these means now and use this information to put them in on a number line, basically. So I'm going to say, OK, well, let's look at A and B. When I look at A and B, I can see that A should be higher than B. So if I'm going from small to large, right, if that's how I'm doing my, my drawing, then I want to put A ahead of B. So A should be to the right of B. That much I start with. Then I look at this. It says A is bigger than C, so I should put A ahead of C. But then that leaves us a possibility here. Where is C going to go? C could go either here or here. To decide that, we'll have to look at the B and C comparison. We'll get to that in a minute, though. A is less than or equal to D. That means that D should be a little ahead of A, right? So I'll put that here. But because they have this symbol between them, I'm going to join them, right? I'm going to join them. We'll do that afterwards, though, OK? So just keep that in mind. These guys, because they have the equal to part, we're going to put a line above them when we're done. All right, now let's look at the, the B and C comparison. When you look at the B and C comparison, you can see that B is supposed to be a little bigger than C. So B should be ahead of C. So I'm not going to put this, to, this C here. I'm going to leave it behind B on my number line. So then it should be C, B, A, D. Now I'm going to put bars above the A and the D and the C and the B because they had the equal to signs. So we join them with a bar to say, hey, they're not significantly different from one another. And then we're going to use the last two little statements here to do a check. So look at it. It says D should be greater than B, right? D is greater than B because it's further to the right. So we're indicating that it's larger than B. And it's significantly larger because there's no bar joining B and D. So that checks. And then for C and D, we can see that C is supposed to be less than D. And again, we see D is way up here. C is way down here. So C is less than D. And there's no bar joining C and D together, which is good because there's no equal sign. So this is perfect. So it looks like our answer is that. It's C, B, A, D. And then one last thing I want to say here is that uh, we can see that the significant differences are essentially um, that A and D are not significantly different but they are significantly larger than both C and B, right? C and B are not significantly different, but they are significantly shorter than or smaller than A and D. Now, the last thing I want to do is just talk about the context of the problem. These are paint drying times. So the fact that these means are smaller, it means they have smaller drying times. It actually means that C and B dry faster. So if you want a fast drying paint, your best paint is either C or B. And the reason why I say or B is because they're not significantly different. So basically, you would finally make your decision between C and B if you're looking for the fastest drying paint. You'd make your decision based on price, right? 
if, uh, if B was much more expensive, then obviously you would choose C because it came out to be slightly faster in drying than B, and if it was cheaper, it'd be the no-brainer. However, if C was much more expensive than B, you might buy B because B wasn't significantly different from C. So even though it wasn't the fastest at our sample results, it was significant, wasn't significantly different from C. So if C was really a lot more expensive, you would purchase B. So that's the idea. But again, if you're looking for the means that are shortest here, and in this case, since we're looking at drying times, drying times that are short are better, we would take these guys as our choice for the best ones.